Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, a new evil bike breaks cover. Uh, we check out some very cool tech from Dynaplug, uh, now with CO2. Millyard are back on the scene yet again with some more stuff. We've got an exclusive video and some cool images to show you. Uh, we also check out that new hip lock anchor, really cool secure thing for bolting your bike to. Oh, you might have noticed as well, I'm in the new dirt shed. Uh, we're not actually in the GMBN tech set because it's still, uh, still being finished, isn't it? Okay, so first up in news, we're gonna take a look at that new bike from Evil. Uh, here it is on the screen right now. Uh, this is from their Instagram page. Now, I have asked Evil about this, I've asked Kevin, I've also asked Cal, uh, keep him pretty tight-lipped about it. Um, so I had a look at that picture, looked very closely, I ran it through Lightroom actually, just to have a bit of a closer look, I've done the cheeky on them. Um, so if you take the shadows down a little bit, like so, get rid of the black level there and take exposure up quite a lot. All right, degraded picture, but you get the idea what I'm talking about. So that is what they've basically shown us on their Instagram page. So what we what can we take from that? Uh, well, firstly, it's a brand new front end design on the bike. Uh, it definitely looks like it's a bit more slacker and a bit longer than previous bikes. Uh, and knowing them, having seen what Graham Axis has been doing, it's gonna be twin crown fork compatible on the front. Uh, it looks like there's a new chain guide on there as well. It looks a little neater than the previous one, although that could just be one that's on there for the, for the picture that they leaked on Instagram. It looks really clean. Look at the line of that top tube. That just looks amazing. And that seat tube, the way that sort of peels off and just curves down to the back of the BB there, that looks absolutely amazing. I'm a big fan of their bikes, but um, I think that actually makes their current bikes look, um, not even current to be fair, that looks so new and so modern uh, with the same sort of Delta Link system that they're using on there, which of course is a DW system from Dave Weigel. Now, something I have seen people talking about, because if you look around online, you will see it popping up here and there. Again, a lot of people making sort of uh, statements on what the bike is. I know it's gonna have a wider rear end on there. It's gonna have a boost, uh, sorry, Super Boost 157. And the reason they've done that is because they needed to put more tire clearance on, because some people have been whingy about that, they wanna run the bigger tires, but they didn't wanna ruin the handling of the way they like their bikes to be, which is very low and very short out back. And in case you haven't forgotten, they do low and extra low. They don't do like low and high as a BB setting. Everything is about as slammed as you can get. Um, I think that thing looks fast even sat there. I think it's gonna be amazing. Um, I also get the impression as well that that's not the only news we're gonna have from these guys. I think there's more stuff in the pipeline, but uh, we shall see. Uh, what do you think of Evil Bikes? And what do you think of that looking thing? I think it looks sick. Let us know in those comments underneath. Next up in news is um, Danger Holm is back doing his crazy modifications uh, to bikes. Uh, this is his Instagram page. In fact, have a little scroll through this and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's clips of him scraping paint off Scott Carbon bikes in the name of making them lighter. The sort of thing that might make you and me wince. In fact, it still makes me wince uh, just thinking about it. Uh, but he does know what he's doing. Um, it's a fine art and not many people are as ballsy as he is, I've got to say. Um, so this shot here, uh, it's just a thing of beauty for me. I just wanted to share this with you. Uh, it's a shot at the front end of one of his Scott bikes where he's basically taken all of the paint off his Fox Forks and polished them back to nearly mirror-like status. Um, is that, or is that not, the best looking pair of Fox Forks you've ever seen? I think it's, it looks absolutely stunning. Uh, I was looking through the comments to find out a bit more on what he'd done on these and someone was actually saying, oh, is they not gonna dole down after use? And the reason that person said that, possibly, is because a lot of forks used to have magnesium lower legs on them. Of course, raw magnesium would, in fact, do that. But with alloy, which those legs are, uh, probably less so, although Danger Home does say with regular polishing, you could get them back up to that. Um, something like a metal polish, for example, would be good if you wanted to do that at home. Um, needless to say, I would imagine that completely invalidates your warranty doing what he's done. But that does look so cool, doesn't it? Now look a little closer, and you might notice that the anodized top caps that are normally there on Fox Forks, i.e. like the Grip 2 damper side, and the air cap, they're not there, are they? What do they look like to you? Yep, they're carbon fiber. So he actually said that they're made by Hop Engineering. So this is uh, Christoph Hop, who helped work with um, Danger Home on some of his earlier projects on the super lightweight carbon stuff. He is making these. So on your screen now is a link to the new Hop Components Instagram page. Again, all these links are gonna be underneath in the comments. And this guy is basically just knocking out of the park with insanely lightweight carbon stuff. Man, I would love a pair of those for the top of my forks. I think they look absolutely amazing. Although there's nothing wrong with the blue anodized stuff, but I do get it. When you're going for the ultimate in custom, that is about as cool as you can get. 
grip to dials in full carbon. Oh, seriously nice stuff. Um, I love what Danger Home's doing and if I had some more time, I'd love to go down that route. Uh, maybe we should just do a collab. He has actually mentioned this in the past, but we've never actually got around to doing it. Um, I think it's just astonishing. Uh, cool, let us know what you think underneath. Should we collab with Danger Home? Or should we try and do something that he's doing that maybe do it better, but probably do it a lot worse? Um, or should I just be quiet? I don't know. Um, right, next up in news. Dynaplug are here. Yes, right, so Dynaplug have been making all sorts of aids for um, fixing punctures for a long time. If I open up this little box, you'll see there's a whole number of things in here. So this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. You basically stab it into your tire, fixes the, the basically fixes the hole in your tubeless tire. You've got these little plugs, if I can pull this one out. Basically that darts it in through there and a plug is left in your tire. Very cool system and it's like a nice little application device. Uh, nice and safe to keep in your pocket. And there's various different options and stuff. They even have these things that you can store loads of extras on the inside. A little particular thing of note is that they've got a little blade in there so you can actually trim them down. But that's obviously a safe place to keep a blade when you're actually riding. Uh, super nice to see. But the thing I wanted to show you wasn't all of that. It was actually just this very small component. Uh, this is very smart and it's because it uses one of these. So if I just move this to the side for the minute. So CO2 cartridge and a dyno plug in one. Now this is a good idea. So we all know that you can get a puncture with a tubeless tire at some point, and the idea is you stab the, the plug in there. There's various different ones on the market. I made a video with Stans a while back, you might have seen that. Um, same concept, that goes in, seals the hole. But sometimes you're gonna need a little air top up. So in that case, you stab the whole thing in, push it all the way in, and you'll see there's a tiny little hole on the applicator there. Once that is inside the tire, you let rip with your CO2 cartridge, tire goes up, pull the whole thing out, leaves that in the tire, seals it. What a cool idea. Love this stuff. Okay, next up in news is uh, I was actually looking around on the Mojo Rising Instagram page. A bit of an Instagram focused news uh, this week. You might have noticed because there seems to be not a lot else going on because in fact we can't go to a lot of places because of flipping coronavirus. Uh, but anyhow, EXT appear to have a suspension fork on the way, or that's certainly how it's worded and seems. Uh, looking at this post, looking at the hashtag era, hashtag new era, uh, hashtag 38, um, is that 38 millimeter or is it 38 reasons to buy it? Um, there's a lot of different things going on, but uh, EXT make the Storia and the Arla shock, uh, so the Armour shock. The Armour is the downhill version and the Storia is the Enduro shock. It's a low pressure coil system, so it runs as low as I think it's 55 PSI in the boost part of the shock there. Um, insanely low friction, uh, super low friction seals, probably the grippiest thing known to mankind to put on the back of a bike. Uh, exceptional piece of kit. Now, if they can bring that technology to a suspension fork, Wow, I think um, there, there could be something genuinely game-changing there. Um, I'm gonna keep watching this post. I suggest you guys do as well, because I think there's something very special about to come from these guys. Uh, so keep an eye on that one. On last week's show, um, I excitedly told everyone about Millyard Racing. Um, that is all the people that didn't pick up on Millyard Racing, what, over a decade ago when they were first in the news. Uh, I actually think it's more important that they're around now because it's far more relevant with the amount of different technology that's around. Um, I showed a bunch of clips and stuff. Now what I'm gonna show you now is this picture that Stephen Milliard put up on his Instagram page. Um, that doesn't look like a stock internal from a pair of suspension forks, does it? And nor does this picture look like uh, the top of a, look at that adapter on the top there. That tells me it's something to do with a very similar system to what they have on their shock. Uh, and he also sent me this video clip. Look at that bike sticking to the ground. That is a short travel bike sticking to roots, wet roots and mud like nothing else. That looks insane. Uh, there's no other news from Milliard except for that. Um, I, and I literally cannot wait to get out of this studio today and try and organize a trip to go and see him because I'm really excited about what he can do uh, with a short travel bike. Can you imagine what he's gonna be able to do with a long travel bike uh, with modern stuff now? Oh my God, I think it's gonna be insane. Uh, watch this space. Okay, and last up in news, um, a little bit of e-bike related news is Forestall. Uh, they had a bike company from Andorra that's fronted by Cedric Gracia. Uh, Cedric obviously being a very famous ex-World Cup downhill, four cross, mountain cross, uh, just about everything racer. Um, hell, of a, hell of a trailer, really. Have a look at this. It looks a bit more something you expect to see from the car industry, the way this is filmed. Now, I know a lot of you might not be interested in e-bikes, but what I like is the approach to this company. If you look at their Instagram page on Forestall, you'll see that 
everything is very different. They're taking an entirely, entirely different approach. So they've got a production facility in Andorra, which of course is where Cedric is famous for living. Uh, there's also the Andorra bike park there, Commercial Bikes there. It's starting to be a little hub down there for mountain biking. Very cool place to ride as well if you're ever down there. And in fact, the Commercial Bar is a really good place to have a burger and a pint too. Um, but back onto the Forestel bike. The reason this is so interesting to me is it's a brand new bicycle company that's just about to launch. They're not just doing mountain bikes, they're doing, well, this is an e-bike, this one here in the image. They're making their own electronic motor, they're making their own batteries, they're making their own bikes from scratch, everything. Um, this is something, as far as I'm concerned, has not really been approached uh, with an outside of bike industry or an unknown entity as such. Now, I've spoken to Jonesy over on EMBN and he's gonna be doing something with these guys soon. And he said, what they have is literally gonna change everything. So, watch this space. Okay, now it's time for a bike cave. That is, of course, uh, your garden shed. It's your under the eaves in the loft. It's under the stairs. Wherever you keep your bike, wherever you lock them, wherever you keep them safe, wherever you speak nice things to your bike or uh, treat them badly, whatever that is, um, send it in. Uh, there's a little link at the bottom of the screen there. Photos, video, anything you want. Tell us about yourself, tell us about your bikes, tell us about your bike cave. Um, bike caves are really cool, so we want to know about them. Uh, first up is from uh, Panchard in uh, Bremont, Quebec. Uh, okay, great. So uh, I ride a Rocky Mountain Altitude, uh, a revamped Commissal AM hardtail as well. Uh, this is our country house garage. It's also got to fit at least one car, but this is where I maintain the family's bikes, including my wife's Norco Sight and EMTB. My daughter's Trek Carly, uh, modified to one by and revamped to 10 speed. Nice, getting involved with this stuff. Uh, my son's altitude, the blue, will follow up with this uh, in another post. And my three bikes. In fact, I recognize your name. I think you might be coming up later on in the same video. Uh, a Commissar AM hardtail and my growler fitted for winter. Uh, it was on GMBN some months ago and got super nice. That's where I know your name from because I'm pretty sure I was either in filming with Martin at the time or I was behind the camera, I can't remember. I was definitely in there, I'm sure. Um, nice looking setup too, it's a pretty massive bike cave you've got there. Full of skis in that, so yeah, okay, it explains obviously where you are. Uh, looks like you've got a bit of a Black & Decker workmate there and you've just put a bit of a wooden top on there to turn it into a bench. Resourceful, I like that. I do like a workmate, they're useful. I killed one of those. I do my house project. Poor things there, in a right old state now. So you're into skiing, there's a lot of skis hanging up on that wall. Um, what else you got, a little kid scooter down there, a whole range of bikes. Man, you've got a pretty loaded workshop there. Full of stuff going on there. And yeah, there's, there's room in there for more than one car by looks of it, like a double garage. Um, and you're not even using half of a car's worth. Snow plow type stuff in there, all sorts of crazy things going on. There's your rack in the back there, PNW, so you probably got a trick seat post on one of your bikes. Some finish line lubricants I can see in there. A Crank Brothers sticker on the side of your toolbox. Um, latex gloves, all sorts of good stuff. Crank Brothers pedals, some Ergon grips down there too. We're supported by those guys, so it's always good to see others using their gear. Looking good. Heavy duty Hoover as well. Sorry, heavy duty vacuum cleaner, I should say. Uh, next up is from Morton in Germany. I've got a 2017 Specialized Enduro. Uh, loving the show, and here's some pieces of, of my bike cave. Hope you enjoy it and keep up the show coming. Uh, I'm doing everything myself on the bike these days, including suspension and wheels. Dude, that's amazing. Uh, the first picture I thought was a mistake, actually. I thought this was like a shop, uh, judging by the amount of muck-off you've got. Man, you must seriously like your muck-off. You seem to have one of everything. So there's uh, the Concentrate Eco Refill, uh, the four litre refill plus the bike cleaner. Man, I don't want to sound like I'm doing a muck off overview. In fact, I'm not going to because I will be. Uh, but you've got a lot of muck off there, stuff there. You've got some uh, RockShox suspension oil up, up the top of the zero weight 30. I think you've got the dynamic seal grease as well and the uh, the fork butter. It used to be called Judy butter back in the day. I think they just call it SRAM butter now. Preferred it when they kept the Judy name. A bit more of the heritage of the company, but hey ho. Uh, nice looking stuff you got there, Camelback and Retro one, in fact, hanging up there, some tool racking, nice cab unit you got there. Uh, oh, you're a bit of a Bosch fan, are you? I'm a bit more Makita myself, but, uh, but uh, I guess everyone, you kind of stay with one sort of system, don't you, once you get involved and start spending your money. Man, looking good, very organised, I've got to say. Hmm, I, I kind of like, mine looks organised, but it's actually, it's quite messy, if it's just shut away in a couple of doors, you can't sit. There's no getting away from it when you've got racking, is there? Uh, looks good, mate. And that is a lot of uh, microfiber cloths you've got lined up there. Man, you must do some serious work in your bikes over that gear. 
Looking rad. Hey, you've got a Karcher as well. Uh, you better add the muck off jet wash to your collection because that doesn't match, quite frankly. Um, and you've got one of those ladders that extends. Tell me this. Do you trust that? I've never trusted those things. I prefer just an old school ladder, double sliding one that hooks on. Um, an extendable ladder to me just sounds sounds like it's just going to come down. A bit like a National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation from old Chevy Chase. Uh, pretty funny scene, to be fair, but uh, I, I wouldn't want that to be me on a ladder. Not sure why I'm still talking about ladders. Uh, enough of that. Uh, thanks for sending them in, guys. Love this stuff, as always. Okay, now it's time for Rewind. Obviously, get to talk about the old retro stuff. If you've got any retro mountain bike stuff, or in fact, if you're just a retro mountain biker, uh, tell us about yourself. Send us some images, send us some video clips on your phone. There's a link at the bottom of the screen there. If it's old, chances are I'm gonna love it, and Henry probably won't, but he's not here today, so uh, keep sending that retro stuff in. So this one is a really cool one. This is in response, actually, to the shot that I showed you last week of that Klein uh, when I visited Sandy's shop over in Shrewsbury. Beautiful looking Klein. And it inspired someone in the comments to post this video. It's playing, I'm just gonna talk over the top of it, um, by Eto, I think it's pronounced Eto, Custom Sprayers. Now they're spraying here a Klein Attitude Storm, and this is a really pleasing thing to watch. So the original Gary Klein bikes were famous for their paint jobs, and some of the ones I checked out had the Linear Fade. In fact, here is a Linear Fade one. Uh, here's a shot from the front and a shot from the back. That's kind of why it looks like two different bikes. Uh, back to the video though, and you'll see that this guy is doing the classic Storm paint job. Now, way back in the 90s, uh, there was a guy called Tinker Juarez. Uh, he used to be a BMX. I think his name was actually David Juarez, but uh, Tinker was his nickname, and it just became the name uh, he used. Now, he used to ride a Klein Attitude frame, painted up in the storm. In fact, here's a shot of him. In, in fact, this is from Tinker's Instagram page. So again, here's a, a link to his handle there, and it's in the description underneath. Give him a follow, legend, old mountain biker. Here's a shot of him with a pair of Mag21 SL tyres on his Storm Spade frame, and he's also got a helmet to match. Uh, but going back, this guy is basically replicating that, and it's just, it's a really pleasing thing to watch. It's amazing. It's, this is work of art. I think this is absolutely amazing. Uh, thank you for letting us use your video, by the way. Uh, really appreciate what you're doing here. And so do uh, 260,081 other people as well. A huge amount of views for people watching a retro bike being sprayed up. Um, dude, what a talent. It's amazing. Uh, and just to follow on from that theme, if you like Klein stuff, um, here's an old Klein Attitude t-shirt, would help if I had it the right way up. Uh, this one came from Bike Ninja. Talked about those guys before, they do some really cool retro stuff. And there's a couple of mugs, including one with the very same Storm paint job on, as you can see on the video that I've just been thrown to. Uh, also from Bike Ninja. So there's still a bit of a retro fraternity out there. Um, I don't think anyone's under the illusion that the uh, retro stuff is better. It's not, it's nowhere near. It's just a nice memory, because uh, the sport now is old enough that we've got a bit of a past. So I think it's always cool to have a little nod to the old, old school stuff, even though the stuff we have today is leagues apart from it. Okay, now it's time for top mods. Any modification you make to your bike counts as a top mod in our eyes. That could be in handlebar grips, it could be putting some colored anodized bolts on there, uh, it could be changing your transmission, it could be a complete respray like we've just seen in Rewind. Whatever it is, we love it. And the more important thing is it customizes your bike. It makes it a bit different to your mates and a bit different to the ones in the shop. So show us your top mods. Link is at the bottom of the screen there. It's also in the description underneath, so you can just click on it and go through to our uploader service. It's super easy to use. There's a bit of a screen flow of the uploader service. You literally tell us who you are, you attach the photographs on there, tell us what's going on in those photos, and bingo, in it comes. I get that in my inbox, and then I can put you on a show. So please continue to do that, because it's rad seeing what you guys do. Now, earlier on on the show, in Bike Cave, I refer to Panchard over in Quebec, Canada, uh, just over, like the other side of the world, uh, Bromont, in fact. Um, this is his one, so this is amazing. So on the screen, you can see is this Rocky Mountain bike. Lovely looking bike, but um, wasn't nice enough, clearly. So um, it took it back to this state with basically exploded diagram here of all of the bits and pieces in the plastic tubs. Uh, you can see some isopropyl alcohol there, some tape, so you get it ready to mask it up for something here. Um, and then a complete respray, a home respray as well. Um, wow, absolutely amazing. Like, to do this yourself is, uh, well, it's a brave move, painting a bike that already looks good, even if it is a bit tacky around the edges. Um, to do this yourself, this is, uh, yeah, yeah, it looks fantastic. 
Really, really good bit of work there. Good bit of spray and the color looks really good on that bike to be fair. Um, and here we go and it's going back together now. I can't believe it's the same bike. There we go. So there's a finished bike with the original kit back on the bike. Uh, it's got the Rocky Mountain decals on there. Good work, like what an effort. I see you've got some sort of Invisi frame or heli tape type protection on there. Good, you want to be looking after that. Um, dude, this is awesome. So you guys, this is my son's bike. Uh, we redid the entire bike. First was a conversion to one by, um, then the brakes to SRAM Guider S, then the fork upgraded to the Manitou Matuk. Then we decided that we were gonna do the paint job uh, to matte blue. All the old parts were still good, and I used it to make a second bike around the Commercial Meta Hardtail. There we go, bit of upcycling there. Awesome work, real cool to see. Thanks for sending that in. Um, and a few snow shots as well, just for added bonus. Nice stuff. And a few more close ups. Okay, now over to Cumbria, and this is John with, it says Nuke Proof Scout, but this picture is definitely not a Nuke Proof Scout. Uh, that's got a Suntour fork on it, that is a Voodoo Bazango. After just months of tinkering, fettling and improving, I've changed the last remaining part of my Voodoo Bazango frame and transferred it all onto my brand new Nuke Proof Scout. A few things to do, uh, source some pedals and uh, maybe 10 mil more travel on the front, but I'm over the moon with the results. Um, right, yeah, so let's have a look. Okay, so you've now changed the fork, so the old fork was the Sun Tour, you've got a Marzocchi Z2 on there. Smart choice, I've been riding the Z1 recently, the slightly longer travel version of that. Uh, Ranthal bars on there, you've got the fat bar, can't tell if that's a carbon or not because they do them in different colours these days. The Apex stem, uh, you've got the DMR death grips without the flange on those. Um, uh, are you a flange lover? Uh, should I even be asking that question? Oh, I'm not really sure. Um, but there's the, the new proof frame, looks really good. Dude, awesome. I love the top cap, what is that? It's got like um, a beer bottle top on there. Feels like that's something I should have on mine. And I said that was an Apex stem, I lied. That's a DMR stem, isn't it? Um, it did look like one from the front when I saw the clamps and you probably called me out on that. But um, I rectified the problem. Looking good, dude. It's always satisfying doing a full build on a bike. Uh, I've always said that everyone at some point when you're a mountain biker, you should build build a frame up, whether it's as you've done it from existing parts and you've transplanted them onto a frame, or you know if you're lucky enough to be able to save up and basically build a bike fresh. It's really good fun. I'm so glad to see that you've done this. So rewarding. Um, and if you can't afford to do it, there's nothing wrong with stripping your existing bike down, cleaning everything, um, and then reassembling it. You kind of get the same satisfaction from that. So everyone can actually do that, and you can learn that. We can help you with some video advice here. And of course, your local bike shop can do all the stuff that you're not happy to do yourself. And to be fair, there are some bigger jobs that bike shops are always better for, but it's not as fun as doing it yourself, is it? Uh, awesome work. Thanks for sending that in. And the last one is, uh, this one's from Geordie in the Netherlands. I saw the Pro Guard front fender on Doddy's bike and really liked the look of it. Unfortunately, the length um, that you're riding is not available for the RockShox fork. Oh yeah, that's right, because I was running the direct mount one and the RockShox forks don't have any holes on the back of the fork arch there, unlike the one I had. Uh, this is it in the screen here. Uh, the fork in question was a pair of Fox forks and they've got the two threaded inserts, the same as Marzocchi and I think uh, Suntour have got something similar and a few others out there, but RockShox, you kind of don't have it. But I like this, I printed my own. Uh, in the length that I wanted. So the model's made of four pieces, glued together, and they're printed by a mate who's got a 3D printer. You still need some paint, but I need to get the bike ready for a ride, and I really wanted to see if it worked. Uh, I love seeing this, this is awesome. Really clean design. Oh yeah, there we go, there's the shape. That looks rad, you'd actually, you never really know it's not, um, not a pro guard, uh, pro guard, yeah. Dude, I'm really impressed. Little sneaky hack there. Looking good. If I was you though, just have, from experience of running the ProGuard, um, you want to tip the nose down as much as you can, and that really does help that spray that goes out the front coming back in your face. Um, but it looks wicked. And that's so cool that you made it yourself as well. Awesome work. Okay, time for tech of the week, and this week it is the Hiplock Anchor. There we go. That's a big boy ground anchor. So, a couple of cool things I want to show you. They come in loads of different colours. Here's some of the packaging. Even the packaging on these things is cool. Now, you might not be able to see this one up close, but uh, part of the point of sale of packaging, where as you hang it on the shelves, you can actually undo this. In fact, I'm gonna undo it right now. Might be here for a minute. And you can take this out of the packaging and you can reuse this to hang your keys on. That is what they use in place of a cable tie or anything like that to hang these from the shelf in your shop floor or your bike shop. 
I think that's really cool because that is a usable thing on its own. It comes with concrete screws as well that need a T30 to use those. Uh, you could also use those in wood. But more importantly, let's get onto the anchor. So these retail about 70 quid, give or take, and they're a very different design to most ground anchors. So historically, the ground anchor is something, it's a big metal plate and it has a shackle sort of link on there and it'll have three or four bolt holes and once you screw it into the ground, which whichever method you want to use basically, you could use uh, resin the thing straight into the ground with epoxy, you could use uh, concrete plugs, there's a number of different ways to do this. And then ideally you'd have the bolts that were exposed then and you'd get ball bearings and hammer those into the heads of the bolts, uh, meaning they're never coming out again unless you dig out the whole piece of concrete that's attached to. Super secure and a really good thing for all of us to have. The only downside is if you have a rental property, you'll probably find you're not allowed to put one of those in um, for obvious reasons. And if you did, you're spending money on a rental property, it's not your house. Okay, this is where these come in. A very different design, as you can see on the bottom, you've got a number of holes for mounting them. That's where the lock passes through. You'll want a big heavy duty chain for this sort of purpose. If I take this apart, you can actually see how this works. And it's very, very simple but then aren't the best ideas, sometimes the most simple ones. You bolt this to your wall, or you bolt it to the ground, whatever you want to bolt it to. This piece then, that your lock actually passes through, screws into it. That then covers up the bolts as you screw it in. As you can see, you might be able to see the bolts underneath at an angle there, if I just show you that. And the whole point is you secure that down with an key. I can't do it tight because I haven't got one on me. You crank it up until it's rock solid. You pass your lock through there, this is just a rubber cover to cover it over, but the point is when your lock is running through there, you can't get access to the bolts that secure it to the ground or the back of your van or the side of your building, whatever you're going to lock it to. Um, and also means that you can remove this when you leave the property, fill the holes in and take it with you to your next place. Um, for that alone, I think it's a wicked product. Uh, it looks pretty cool as well to boot. Uh, and the stats are they retail for about 70 quid and it's a gold secure, uh, sold secure. Uh, that is for both bicycle and motorcycle, so you know it's a tough piece of kit. Now, um, do you guys lock your bikes up? I kind of hope you do. Uh, we've made some security videos before. Uh, a few of those are going to be around after this video if you ever wanted to see those. Uh, definitely take a look at them. A few of them I've shown you how to fit ground anchors. I can't tell you enough um, how much you should invest heavily in stuff to basically stop people trying to nick your bikes. Uh, Got to be the worst thing in the world. Absolutely hate that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to keep on talking about this sort of stuff until you click on one of these videos that's hanging around uh, and I'm just going to be here and annoy you. So uh, yeah, do what you want.